Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out this evening for the conclusion of our Spring Meet the Author series. My name is Erin Shea, and I'm the head of adult programming here at the library. I'd like to just briefly mention that programs at the library are made possible by our annual Friends of the Library campaign. So thank you for your continued support to make programs like these and our collections available to the community. Tonight's guest worked for 10 years as an editor and reporter for the New York Times. His first book, Chaos, was a National Book Award and Pulitzer Prize finalist and a national bestseller. His next books include the best-selling biographies Genius, The Life and Science of Richard Feynman and Isaac Newton, both shortlisted for the Pulitzer Prize, as well as Faster and What Just Happened. They have been translated into 25 languages. From 1989 to 1990, he was the McGraw Distinguished Lecturer at Princeton University. For some years, he wrote the Fast Forward column in the New York Times Magazine. With Uday Ivaturi, he founded The Pipeline, a pioneering New York City-based internet service in 1993, and was its chairman and chief executive officer until 1995. He was the first editor of the Best American Science Writing Series, and six days ago, the American Library Association and the Carnegie Corporation of New York announced the nominees for the Andrew Carnegie Medals for Excellence in Fiction and Nonfiction. His book is one of those finalists. When I was describing the book, the information to our patrons, the best way that I could describe it was it's one of those books where when you're reading it, you just want to read some of the facts you've just learned to whoever you're sitting next to, whether it's your husband, your father, or whoever's sitting next to you on the train. So because you're my captive audience tonight, I'm actually going to just tell you about one of the facts that I learned while reading it. So one of the chapters in the book is dedicated to describing the development of the Oxford English Dictionary, which is something that has always fascinated me. And toward the end of the chapter, it discusses how the word mond green came into our language. And it actually originated from, um, oh, I'll first define it. A mond green is the mishearing or misinterpretation of a phrase as a result of near homophony in a way that gives it a new meaning. So it originally came from the American author Sylvia Wright when she was describing a poem that she heard as a young girl. And the line in the poem, the original line is, and laid him on the green, but she heard it as, as Lady Mond Green. So that's where the word comes from, which I found just fascinating. To give you an example of a modern Mond Green, um, my dad is always famous for telling us that he originally thought the ACDC song lyrics were, uh, she was a fax machine, she kept her modem clean. <laughs> These were just some of the facts that I learned while reading the information. <laughs> um, the reason that I really, well, the way I really got Jane, um, our author here tonight, is in January I was at a meeting at Random House with some publicists there. And I was just telling them about the library and saying how we wanted them to send their top-notch authors here. And one of the publicists said, well, do you have anyone in mind? And before she could even finish her sentence, I was like, James Gluck. <laughs> so I'll stop talking about myself now. I'm so very honored to welcome to Darien Library, Mr. James Gluck. There's also the hymn, the famous hymn, Lead On, O Kinky Turtle. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Thank you all for coming. I'm really happy, really happy to be here. Um, I'm unpacking. Let's see. This is a book, of course. This, of course, is not a book, but um, as you all know very well, the lines are beginning to blur. I have it out because I want to, before we get down to business, I want to start by reading something I just found on the internet. And it's a prediction about the internet that comes from the Times of London in 1997. So that's 15 years ago. And the, uh, the prognosticator is Sir Simon Jenkins. He says, so great is the commercial hyperbole surrounding the internet that common sense is obliterated by dazzle. It has proved a boon for pornographers and lawyers and for the sort of upmarket pen pals who used to rave about citizens band radio. 
The internet is one more electronic craze that market forces will sooner or later put in its proper context. For the time being, its fanatical proponents need the sympathy and tolerance once extended to Esperantists and radio hands. <laughs> he says, the internet will strut an hour upon the stage and then take its place in the ranks of lesser media. Well, that hasn't happened yet. Um, my, my point is not exactly to make fun of him, though, because in a way, this is how I feel about Facebook. <laughs>